All right. We're going to talk about uh, the title of this message is Warring Against Porn, A Plan for Online Purity. And I, I've thought about this. I put this together a few weeks ago, and it's by no means a, you know, a perfect outline or anything like that. But I, I want to help. You've got to, if, you, if you're ever going to battle something, you've got to war against it. Okay? You've got to, if you're ever going to get the victory, you've got to fight against it. You've got to hate it, and you've got to fight against it in order to get the victory against it. And I believe you know, the Bible says here, every purpose is established by counsel. And with good advice, make war. So we look at the scriptures and we see the issue. We understand. I've preached before. Go back if you've not listened to those sermons on pornography. There's two of them. Uh, one of those sermons, I, I can't think of the names of them right now. What's it? Re, uh, pornography, rewiring your mind control, rewiring your brain. Okay, that one. Uh, listen to that one if you haven't yet. Yeah, Pitfalls and Perils of Pornography uh, is another one that I preached right after that or the same day. And then I preached one on ordinate affections, making sure your affections are proper, those biblically ordained affections towards your wife if you're married, to have those proper biblical affections. That way you keep yourself from the trap of pornography, helps you to understand how to deal with those uh, those affections the proper biblical way, okay? Um, and by practicing those affections the proper way, you can get the victory over that, uh, over the, the heat and the fire, the lust and things like that, that 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 will war in your members if you don't take care of those things properly. Properly uh, paying attention to your wife. You can go back and listen to those sermons, okay, on that subject. Uh, I believe they're important. I think they're all together. I don't know if they're not. There's another one that I need to put on there. It's called Burning an Image Never to Be Erased. That needs to be in that series, too, on pornography. Uh, that's, that, that is a, a helpful one that would, would help uh, as well. But this is more like we live in an age today where everybody lives online. So you're not going to get around that. You, you, you've got to be practical when it comes to things. And, I, and we have a generation that has grown up on YouTube and Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram and everything like that. So this Generation Z, this younger generation, they have grown up with those things. They've grown up online. And I believe one of the things that we have to do with good advice, make war, every purpose is established. If you have the purpose to keep yourself pure and clean and holy, then you must have a good battle plan for it. You need to have a good battle plan from the scriptures. If you have succumbed to that wickedness of pornography, if you have, if you have dealt with that at all in your life, or to make yourself, uh, to, to put up a safety net and, to be, and prepare yourself so you don't fall into those traps, then you know what? You need to, you need to, have a good, you, you need to establish some things, okay, and war against those things. You know, today so many men have been, attra have been trapped and snared by the devil through the weapon of pornography. It is, and online pornography is the most wicked thing, the most addictive thing out there uh, today. A man, and I've given you the statistics in other sermons, so I'm not going to do that in this one. That's not the purpose of this sermon. Go back and listen to those uh, if you want to hear some of those things. They're very thorough. But a man does not have to hide any longer uh, to, to, to view pornography. He doesn't have to be shamed by purchasing a magazine in the open public. He, he can write from his phone... And, you know, we've talked about this before, but, but the flicker rate and the other things that go on and the addictive things that are, and the graphic things, high definition and all of those things have made it much more dangerous and a more effective tool of Satan to use in the lives of people, in the lives of men. And being online is another dangerous thing for many men, but you cannot escape the reality that people are going to be online. So whether it's on the street corner, when, when the Bible talks in Psalms chapter 7, it talks about the strange woman and that what he wasn't supposed to do, or if I'm on the online corner and there's the strange woman or the wickedness that is online, I need to have a battle plan to fight it. I need to be wise and I need to, to, to war a good warfare against it and prepare my mind. Much of the preparation of this is the mind and the heart to be prepared to, to, for purity and to do things the right way. So I, I guess I'm going to give you some practical things, some very practical things that I believe will help you to prepare it for that battle, for that war. With good advice, make war, the Bible says. Amen? This is very important. You know, the most dangerous place for a man to be today is online. Oh, it's dangerous. 
Christian men need a battle plan to fight pornography if they've ever had a problem with that. Especially if you've been trapped by it in the past. So I want to give you some helpful hints here. So number one, I want to start with this. And, I, and these are, this is very practical. This is not like in-depth or, you know, um, something that is, is, is probably amazing or anything like that. What it is is very practical. And that's what we need is back to the basics and to be very clear on things. That's, that's, that's always the strength of instruction for people is to be very simple with it. Very clear steps that they can follow. So number one, have a purpose to be online in the first place. You need to have a purpose. Being online or being on the internet is no place to be for a wandering heart or mind with nothing to do. You are going to get into pornography if you do that. You are going to get yourself in trouble. There should be a good reason for you to be online. There should be a purpose for it. Daniel chapter 1 verse number 8. I like this word, little play on words here, but the same concept. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. What did Daniel do? He purposed in his heart that he was going to live right. You know what? That he was going to live holy. And you know what? Before you even go online, it's got to be purpose in your heart that you're going to live holy. That, that, that you are going to live separated. That you are not going online. You are not going to be attracted by the devil's devices. You are not going to be straight uh, uh, swayed by them. You are going to stay away from those things. You're going to stay away from the unclean thing already before you get online. You understand that there's a purpose for you to be online. Daniel was driven. What was his purpose? To serve God. To be faithful to God. That was Daniel's purpose. If you want victory, then you've got to purpose it in your heart according to the scriptures that you are going to follow the Lord. Daniel was driven. He had a plan. He planned his work and he worked his plan. One of the problems I see of being online, idleness. You've got no purpose and nothing to do. Well, go talk to somebody. Get offline. Shut the computer off. Live in the real world. If you're not doing anything productive for the Lord, if you're not doing anything that needs to be done, then get off of it. It's a death trap for the, for the, for the uh, child of God for his walk with the Lord. If you're just out there aimlessly roaming around and doing whatever, you're going to get into sin. You're going to get into pornography. You're going to get yourself in trouble because you've got no purpose. You're just floating around doing whatever. No, that's a dangerous place to be. You might as well be walking right next to a whorehouse and looking inside of it if you're going to do that. That's how, that's how impractical that is. You've got a purpose, you get on, you get off. That's the purpose. No other reason. It's not a place to be just to play games. To, to aimlessly with your mind just roam. We're going to get to that too. Many people are leisurely on there. It's just leisure. If you want to get into trouble and have, and have a pornography problem or have had one in the past, just waste time online and you'll end up viewing images and things that you should not do. Be focused. Okay, I'm done. i got nothing to do there. Move on. Listen, you plan success. It doesn't just happen. You plan victory. It doesn't just happen. What just happens is sin when you allow yourself all that free time to do nothing. And get busy. What are you doing anyway? Get in your Bible. Shut the stupid computer off and get in your Bible. Sit at the feet of Jesus and learn something. Instead of fulfilling your lusts. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And he didn't. Why? Because he planned not to. He had a plan for it. By the way, that goes for women, too. You can get online and waste your time with a bunch of nonsense and garbage. It may not be pornography, but you're still wasting your time. You're still looking at things you don't need to, lusting after things you don't need. If you don't have a reason to get on there, get off there. If you got a purpose, fulfill the purpose, the right purpose, a righteous purpose. Get on there. Get it done. Get off. Get back into reality. Get back in the real world. It's a lot harder to get into sin like that and stay into sin like that when you're talking to real people and you're not online virtually doing everything. We have to war against it. So we need to have a purpose and have a plan for how to fight against porn. Don't waste time. Be about your father's business. You shouldn't be wasting a huge amount of time even on Facebook, Instagram, or any other sites like that. Man, all that stuff does is lead to a bunch of trouble is what it leads to. Get on, get off. Say what you have to say, get off. If you have that much time, extra time, 
Spend it studying the Word of God and praying and helping others. People who have no purpose online, though, they will end up viewing things they shouldn't. Why? Because they're idle. They're idle and they get in trouble. The Bible talks about that with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, right? Same thing online. So you don't have to leave your house now. So your feet don't go, but your mind does. And you take your mind online, you go everywhere. You're idle, you're going to get in trouble. That's why women aren't supposed to be idle. You know, if you're idle, you're gonna, your mind's going to start wandering and you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Because you got nothing to do. But you've got plenty to do. Plenty. Joseph also had a purpose to do his work, didn't he? He got out of that house. Remember when that temptation came? What did he do, man? He ran out of that house. Whew, he was gone. He ran from it. Flee youthful lust. He ran. He ran from it. I got no reason to be online. If you got no reason, get off. Be about your father's business so you won't fall for the traps of the wicked one. Number two, don't let your mind drift. The next thing that drifts will be your mouse into trouble. If you have a passive mind, you will end up viewing pornography. If you are prone to pornography, then you must not let your mind wander online. That is the that's again, that's not having a purpose, that's just wandering. I'm allowing my mind to wander. That's when you get into trouble. Like they say the an idle mind is the devil's playground. Well, an idle mind online must be his amusement park then. Right? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You got to cast down those imaginations. If your thoughts wander, then guess what? So, are you, so, so is your mind going to wander online, and so are you going to be drifting off into needless things. That's how you get in trouble. Go to this, go to this, go to this. It has nothing to do with anything. That's when you're about ready to get in trouble. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. As soon as the thought enters in, cast it down. Don't entertain it. Don't argue with it. Cast it down. Be done with it. I've preached on that. You can go back and listen to that sermon. I forget what it was called. But there's a bunch of them on your thoughts in the mind. I've done a bunch of them. When Satan Satan attacks the mind and a bunch of other ones. Wandering thoughts and what? Wandering thoughts and wicked imaginations. Yeah, that was one. Yep, there, and there's like two or three other ones. Fiery darts of the wicked. That's another one. And uh, anyway, there's a bunch of those. If your thoughts wander, then your mouse is going to. You need to keep your mind focused and fixed and not waste time. It used to be that God's people used to focus and fix their mind. Men used to meditate and fix their mind on things and focus their mind on things. Now, given the news, the articles, Facebook feeds, everything else, we have a thousand thoughts thrown at us in seconds and nobody can concentrate anymore and think about it. And that's what the devil wants. He wants your mind to be in absolute confusion and working like this and going everywhere and doing this. Why? Because then it's easier to sin. Because it's full of confusion. Because your mind is not focused. Your mind is not, you're not meditating on anything. So then evil comes. Evil will come with that. If your mind is idle, you're going to get into trouble. The Bible says, with all they learn to be idle, what happened? It says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse number 13, and with all they learn to be idle... Wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also in busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Now they don't leave their house, they just do it online. They just do it online now. They don't have to leave their house, they just do it online. Right? Idle minds lead to trouble. If you don't place every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, you are going to fall into pornography. Passive minds are raped by the devil. Is that blunt enough for you? I'll say it again. Passive minds are raped by the devil or devils. When your mind is passive and not fixed and not disciplined and not orderly, the devil is going to take hold of your thoughts. That's why we have to have the helmet of salvation. Put it on and use the helmet of salvation. The devil is going to take your thoughts. 
He's going to use, he's going to shoot those fiery darts into your mind and all kinds of wickedness and perversion. Where'd that come from? Don't worry about where it came from. Just cast it down and be done with it. He wants you to think about where it came from. It came from hell. That's where it came from. Now keep going. Ignore it. Fight it. Ignore it. Rebuke it and move on. Cast it down. But you, you understand that every mind that was ever taken over through mind control or anything else is a passive mind. They have to be in a passive state so they can take it over. Psychiatrists, they're mind rapers. Hypnotists, mind rapers. I'm going to preach on that. I have a sermon that I started on that, but I just kind of left it alone for a while. But passive minds are raped by the devil. That's what happens. They come in, he comes in, or his devils come in, and they come in and they attack the mind. Yep. That's why it's important to meditate on good things and right things. It disciplines the mind. It teaches you to meditate on one thing and to focus on that and to think and study on that. And it'll keep you from evil. Especially when you're, when, when you're online. You cannot have a passive mind just roaming around allowing anything to happen. So well, my intention wasn't to do that. I know it wasn't. But if you leave your mind passive like that and you don't have any, any real purpose and any focus, you're going to get in trouble. Most of the time when a man finds trouble online, he finds it when he's not focused and planning his work and working his plan. Our minds must be meditating on God's word and on good things. The Bible talks about think on these things. That's another one, how to fight the devil in thoughts. I, I preached that a few months ago. Think on these things for a victory. Don't let your mind be raped through passiveness and giving yourself over. Put your thoughts in check. No fantasy or imagining evil. Filter that mind. Put a filter on your mind. Put a check on your heart. You need to think on good things, not evil. You can't entertain evil thoughts. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 23, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You got to keep your heart. Put a guard on your heart. Put a watch on your heart. Be watchful. Be alert. Don't, what does that mean? That's the opposite of being passive. That's the opposite of allowing your mind to be taken and just, oh, these thoughts are just roaming in my head. I'm just allowing them to, no, 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 no. Take control of that and don't allow your mind to do that, especially when you're online because that's, that's, that's not preparing yourself and you're going to get into trouble. Don't let your imagination go into overload. I preached on that. It's called imagination overload. Beware of evil surmising. Cleanse your hands, purify your hearts, you double-minded. What does he say? James chapter 4, verse number 8. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Single-minded, right? Focused. Nope. This is my intent. This is what I have to do. Nothing gets me off my mission. I'm done with it. Time to get off. You cannot linger with things like that. You're going to get in trouble. The temptation will be there. And the temptation is not wrong. It's giving into the temptation that's a sin. Number three. I think it's number three. Be accountable. Don't be online too long. Alone. You need to be accountable. That's why what I do is in front of everybody in my home. I don't have anything to hide. Right there. Got to be right there in front of people. So I can see it. So they know what I'm doing. My wife knows online and all that kind of stuff. She knows right what's going on right there. Why? Because it's accountability. I know full well that my children can pick up my iPad or pick up something. They can see whatever comes across there if there was something wrong on that. It's an accountability. You need to be accountable to others. You need to be accountable to someone. Everyone needs to be accountable to someone. Romans chapter 14, verse number 12 says, So then every one of us shall give account to himself to God. So we first are accountable to God. And every idle word shall be judged. We will give an account for every idle thought, every idle word, every idle thing that we do. We will give an account to God. We will stand before him. And the things that we have done in this body, we will be judged for. You keep that in mind every time you go online. You and I are going to give it a count. Right? That's a sobering thought.
there's a judgment. Understand and never forget we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And you can't go incognito or block God out. You can't go on a web browser that doesn't trace your spots you go to with God. God sees it all. You're not hiding anything from God. You might hide it from your wife, from your pastor, from your friends, from everybody else, but you're not hiding it from God. God sees it. There's no secret browser with God. God is the revealer of secrets. There's no way to hide. Understand and never forget that. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it's true biblical repentance to continue to do the same things over and over again and then say, sorry, God, I have no victory? You've got a plan for victory. I get victory by planning for it as a child of God. I have access to that victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors, the Bible says. But I've got a plan for that. I have to plan for victory. You have to keep yourself from the accursed thing. You need to be accountable to God. You will answer to God if you're his child. He will not wink at your sin. You are not struggling with sin if you are giving into it. You struggle with the temptation. You understand that? Every man struggles not with sin but with temptation. There's a difference. I'm struggling with being tempted over this sin. Not I'm in this sin and I'm struggling. No, you're not struggling. You're giving in. You're not fighting. You're giving in. That's not fighting. You're giving in. You're rolling over in the filth and getting dirty. You're not, you're not struggling with anything. But you don't understand. No, I understand perfectly well. Don't tell me I don't understand. The most patronizing words ever, I, you don't understand. The most manipulating, maniacal words ever, you don't understand. No, I understand full well. Believe me. No, I do understand. There's a difference in struggling with temptation and struggling with sin. When you say you're struggling with sin, I'll say, no, you know what? If you're giving into it, no, you're not struggling with anything. You're giving into it. If you're struggling with temptation, that I say I understand because <laughs> we all do. Maybe a different poison, but still poison nonetheless. But I'm struggling with this. Struggling with the temptation of it or doing it. You need to be accountable to God. But you also must be accountable to others as well. You need to answer to someone. Let me ask you, can your wife look at your smartphone? Can your children? Would they be defiled by the images that come across? Does your wife know your passwords? Does she have access to all your devices? Who are you accountable to? Who are you accountable to? Maybe you're not married. Well, maybe you need a brother or someone else that's able to look at your computer or smartphone if you, have, if you had a problem with pornography. Maybe you should. I have to stay, account I stay accountable to my wife and my children. Everything I do online is in front of them. I don't hide it and I don't go work in the dark. Why? Because it's not smart. It's not wise. Not wise at all. Mm -mm. I get a little nervous when people want to go hide out by themselves. Now I understand it gets noisy. <laughs> I work from home, I understand. Okay. <laughs> I. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you, you, you know, you got to get a little bit away. I, I, I'm not putting that, I understand, because I, I have five children and a dog. <laughs> Good about that dog. And uh, so I understand sometimes. And if you don't, like they think, if, you, if you're in the room, they think you're there. And you're like, no, I'm not there. But you are there. <laughs> no, I'm really not here. <laughs> okay, so I, I understand that. I'm not talking about that. Usually those things happen at night when people are huddled off by themselves. 
If you spend a lot, I, listen, you, you got some problems. You spend a lot of time by yourself on a computer alone by yourself at night. Don't do that. That's not good. You're asking, you're asking for trouble. You're asking to get into sin. You're asking for temptation. You're asking for trouble. There is something about staying up late at night too and watching porn. There, there's something about that, this late night activity that you've got to watch and be very cautious of. The Bible talks about us being children of the light. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 5. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So he's saying, you know, not to sleep. He's not saying, I'm just talking about spiritual things here. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. He's talking about the sin that happens with people. It usually happens in the night. What do people frequent the dark? What's a bar? You go into it, it's dark, dim, dark, dark places. Right? Very dark. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. Many men that are trapped in pornography or get caught up are alone viewing it at night all the time. There's something about that. It's not good. Jesus spoke about the light. He said in John, John chapter 3, verse number 20, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. The things at night are much easier to do. And I believe there's, I believe there's, there's something about that accountability in the dark that there isn't. And that, that's why it's so easy for people to fall prey to that wicked spirit and that spirit world. And they get tied up into pornography. I think it's just easy. It facilitates it a lot easier. There's something about doing things at, at night in the dark. Proverbs chapter 7, verse number 6. Strange woman at dark. Proverbs chapter 7, verse number 6. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and behold, beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with an attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day. Have, have, have I paid my vows? Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. Come, let us make, take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the, good, with the good, for the good man is not at home. He is gone on a long journey. He had taken a bag of money with him, and he will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. She goeth after her, he goeth after her straightway. Dumb man, look, as, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Look at that, it says decline. To her ways, go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. That sounds like pornography, doesn't it? For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. The dead are there, right? Yeah, the wicked devils with pornography. Why do you think pornography is so powerful of a, of a tool of Satan? Because devils are attached to it, that's why. Devils are attached to that, that's why. That's why it becomes so absolutely strong and powerful, it's satanic. It is a stronghold, that's right. The dead are there, the wicked devils. Every night they're there. People hide things in the night, don't they? You ought to use your computer. You ought to be accountable. Use your computer during the day. Use the tablet or smartphone during the day. When you get tired, you are weak. Satan comes to attack when you're weak. Physically, mentally, spiritually. 
When you're at your weakest point, that's when he comes to attack you. That's what he did to Jesus after he had fasted all those days. And then he came, right? Here comes Satan. Amalek came, then came Amalek. When did he come? When they were weak, when they had just left and they were on that journey and they had no water, right? Bam, he comes to attack them. That's when he comes and attacks. So you and I need to put ourselves in a position, you and I need to not put ourselves in a position to fall by playing around alone online at night with a wandering mind. No, you're not strong enough to do it. You're being a fool. Yeah, many strong, right? Many of those men have been wounded. Many mighty men have been wounded, right? Brought down. What's that? Slain by her, that's right. It is vain, Psalm, Psalms 127.2, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. So go to bed. Is that clear enough, Brother Andrew? Yeah. Go to bed. Don't stay online up all night by yourself. Sometimes my wife, we're ready to go to bed, and she's like, oh, okay, I'm going, I'm going to go to bed. And, and I'm sitting out there. I was like, well, I'm going to. Shut the computer. I'm going with you. I ain't sitting out here by myself. That's a trap, man. No, I don't do that. Don't need that. I'm going to bed too. I don't need that trap. Enough traps the devil's laying for me. I don't need that one. I don't need to walk into it like a fool to the stocks, right? That's what it says. Like a fool to the stocks, big dummy, walking straight for your for your ruin. Is this too practical? Too practical, you know? Come on, preacher, prophesy us some smooth things. Give us something. Talk about them queers again. Can we get back on them queers again? On your homosexualism. Can we get back on... <laughs> Chetisms, the DVD is coming. <laughs> it's coming. Right? All right, so, you know, the Bible says he gives his beloved sleep, so go to sleep. Amen? And it's simple, right? Good idea. Next, is it number four or five? Is it five? Who's keeping track? You guys aren't paying attention very well. I don't know either. Is it four, brother? Okay, thanks, brother Scott. He's paying attention. And he's sitting up in the front row. Amen. Next, make a covenant with your eyes. Before you go online, have that stamped on your forehead and on your heart. We talked, we talked about putting a filter on your heart. Make a covenant with your eyes. Job 31.1, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Dealing with the thoughts, dealing with the eyes. The thoughts and the eyes. I'm not going to fix myself on it. Hey, sometimes you could scroll on something. There's something in the background. Don't fix your eyes on it. Keep moving. Keep moving. Right? You just keep moving. When I've seen, you know, things like that on Fox News or even Drudge, he's getting sick too. He's getting stupid with stuff. And Alex Jones has just gotten way... Like, he doesn't even care anymore about any. He used to care about some of that stuff and not put that stuff, you know, just... I'm not talking about nudity, but biblical nudity, what the Bible calls nudity. But just not dress right. Just And he just puts it on there now. He never used to do that, but now he's putting it on there. But anyway. But we, we, should, we need that guard on our heart. We need that covenant with our eyes. We should never stare and fantasize or lust after anyone. My conscience and my eyes are the contracting parties. Listen to this on making a covenant with my eyes. God is the judge, and I am therefore bound not to look upon anything with the delighted or covetous eye by which my conscience may be defiled or my God dishonored. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. 
See also that the fearful and solemn declaration of our Savior, there is much emphasis in the expression used here by Job. Turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse number 28. Jesus said, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. God hates it. Amen. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Get the feeling that God hates lust. There is much emphasis in the expression used here by Job when he said that he made a covenant with his eyes. He does not merely say that he had not thought in that matter, but that the thing was morally impossible that he should have done it. Any charge of that kind or any suspicion of it, he would repel with indignation. His purpose to lead a pure life and to keep a pure heart had been so settled that it was impossible that he could have offended in that respect. His purpose also not to think on this subject showed the extent of the restriction imposed on himself. It was not merely his intention to lead a chaste life and to avoid open sin, but it was to maintain a pure heart and not to suffer the mind to become corrupted by dwelling on impure images or indulging in unholy desires. So what was he saying? He was saying, I'm not going to allow, I'm going to fix it here and here first before I even look out there with my eyes. Do you understand that? Well, preacher, you don't understand the problem is there's so much pornography. No, the problem is your heart. The problem is your heart. It's not what's on there. There's always been groves. There's always been sin. There's always been adultery. There's always been fornication. And yes, it's ramped up. And yes, it's getting worse in these end times. But the problem is not that. The problem is before you go online, check your heart and your eyes. That you make a covenant. That you check your heart and your eyes. That you're not going to defile yourself. You've already purposed it in your heart. You've already decided before you go online, I'm going to purpose this in my heart that I'm not going to do this. Before you even get there. Sure, yeah, it's a cesspool of wickedness everywhere. But so is going down the street, so is walking in the grocery store, so is going to the co-op, so is going anywhere. Anywhere, even in the winter. Even in the winter we saw women dressed like whores. I'm like, man, cold whores, aren't you freezing? I, I didn't call them that, I'm just saying, but, but, they, but it's like they're, they're dressed like, it's like, aren't you freezing? Like, how do you even do that? I'm freezing, listen. I've got Under Armour 4.0 on. I've got a I've I've got a stinking insulated coat on. I've got a parka on, with 300 grams of Primaloft, and you're walking around like this. And you've got to be devil possessed because I don't know how you could do it. Right. But this all, back to Job and the covenant with his eyes, this strongly shows Job's piety and purity of heart and is a beautiful illustration of the patriarchal religion. He may, we may remark here that if a man wishes to maintain purity of life, he must make just such a covenant as this with himself, one so sacred, so solemn, so firm that he will not suffer his mind for a moment to harbor an improper thought. Cast it down. Cast it down. Down. The very passage of an impure thought through the mind leaves pollution behind it. Think about that. I want to read that to you again. The very passage of an impure thought through the mind leaves pollution behind it. And the outbreaking crimes of life are just the result of allowing the imagination to dwell on impure images. As the eye is the great source of danger... There should be a solemn purpose that that should be pure and that any sacrifice should be made rather than allow indulgence to a wanton gaze. Turn to Mark chapter 9, verse number 47, please.
Again, we read this, and if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. No man was ever too much guarded on this subject. No one ever yet made too solemn a covenant with his eyes and with his whole soul to be chaste. You can't be too strict on yourself. Right? But it's forged. Those wicked thoughts are forged from the heart. And then the temptations of Satan and the fiery darts of the wicked one come to attack you. And he uses already what he has to work with. And what is that? A heart that is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's what he uses. He's got a lot to work with. He's got a lot to work with. I made a covenant with mine eyes, he said, not to look upon a woman and wantonly gaze at her beauty, lest her heart should be drawn thereby to lust after her. Lest his heart should be drawn thereby to lust after her. For the eyes are inlets to many sins. And particularly to uncleanness, of which there have been instances both in bad men and good men. So, the, so Job represents the eye as the way through which the beauty of a woman passes swifter than an arrow to the hearts of men and makes impressions there. Turn to Second Peter chapter 2, verse number 14, please. Having eyes full of adultery, and they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Talking about the loss there. But you think about that, what does it say there? Having eyes full of adultery, that cannot cease from sin. That better not be said about you. But what is the condition? Anybody notice the condition? What is, he, what, what is it? Yeah, but beguiling unstable souls. A heart? What, what's the wrong with their what's wrong with their heart? They're covetous. They're not pleased with what God has given them. So they're always looking for something else. Why? What does the Bible say about that? Anybody remember what the Bible says about that? That too? But it says the eyes of a man are never satisfied. Mm -hmm. Hence one leader ordered adulterers to be punished by plucking out the eyes of the adulterer because of this very thing. Wherefore Job, to prevent this, entered into a solemn engagement with himself, laid himself under a strong obligation, as if he had bound himself by a covenant, made a resolution the strength of divine grace not to employ his eyes in looking on objects that might ensnare his heart and lead him to the commission of sins. He, he made use of all ways and means and took every precaution to guard against it, and particularly this, to shut or turn his eyes from beholding what might be alluring and enticing to him. It is said of one Democritus that he put out his eyes because he could not look upon a woman without lusting after her. Why then should I think upon a maid of corrupting and defiling her since he had made a covenant with his eyes? And this would be a breach of that covenant. And therefore, beside the sin of lusting after her or of corrupting her, he would be a covenant breaker. And so his sin would be an aggravated one. Or he made a covenant with his eyes to prevent any impure thoughts, desires, and inclinations in him. For the eye affects the heart and stirs up lust in it and excites unclean thoughts and unchaste desires. This shows that the thought of sin is sin. That fornication was reckoned a sin before the law of Moses. And that Job better understood the spirituality of the law than the Pharisees did in the time of Christ. And had the same notion of lust in the heart being fornication and adultery as he had 
And that good men are not without temptation to sin, both from within and from without. And therefore should carefully shun all appearance of evil, and whatsoever leads unto it, and take every necessary precaution to guard against it. It's proactive, friend. You've got to have a plan, and you've got to work your plan. Conscientious of all evil near you, with your eyes wide open to understand it and where it is, to prevent and to keep thyself pure. Amen. He wouldn't, his eyes, he wouldn't lustfully consider her beauty till my heart be hot as an oven with lawless lust and my body wallows in the mire of that abominable filth. For unbridled lust, like the wild fig, will soon mount over the wall and those base, vain, wanton, capering thoughts will break out if not timely suppressed. If we handle them not roughly at the door as Elisha did, their master's feet will not be far from far behind them. Sin lieth at the door, right? If those thoughts are tending to that sin, the actions are not far from you. Cast down the thoughts, and the actions cannot happen. Wow, I think I did I blow this out when I'm yelling like that? Okay. All right. Am I blowing you all out yelling like that? I hope I am. I hope, I hope it's keeping you awake. I know, I know this is a tough one to deal with because lust is in a man's heart and has to be cast down. But like Paul said, as my beloved sons, I warn you, I'm tired of seeing people fall. I'm tired of, I'm, I'm tired of watching it happen. And I see this young generation and it bothers me because they don't, they barely have a chance. They barely have one. I know it's their own sin, but I look at them and it's like, if I can just help to equip them somewhat they, so they can have a chance. I don't want them to see what I've seen. I don't want them to do what I've done. I want to keep them from it. I want to equip them to fight the devil and fight lust and to fight those things. I want to equip them to fight it. I want them to get the victory. I want Satan to go to hell. <sighs> Quell them, therefore, and crush them in the egg. It is not safe being at Satan's meal. Though our spoons be never so long, remember that of looking comes thinking, and of thinking worse. Look upon the woeful chain of David's lust, and remember how many have died of the wound in the eye. Remember David? How about it? The fourfold judgment of the man after God's own heart? Go back and listen to those. Remember those. Remember that it carried over. And no good thing came from it. The basilisk slayeth with his sight. Circa in, Gre in Greek and Latin mythology, the name of an enchantress who dwells in the island of Ai and transformed all who drink of her cup into swine, often used elusively, will enchant all that behold her. He's saying that your look, this is John Trapp, and he's saying that it's like mythology, it's like that this character mythology, how... That, per, that character would entrap them by that and enchant them. And that's the same thing with pornography. Once your eye goes there, once you've not made that in your heart and your mind right, once your eye goes there, then it'll take you. It'll enchant you. Irregular glances and, or, inordinate, or inordinate gazing is that which metamorphosizes the man into a beast and makes him a prey to his own brutish affections. Hence David prayed, turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. Job here stepped one degree further from a prayer to a vow, yea, from a vow to an imprecatory prayer that his eyes should be eyes of adamant that will turn only to one point that he would not look, but where he might lawfully like. I will not look only at what I can lawfully like. Amen? Amen? 
Use an internet filter called Coveted Eyes if you need to, if you need to put it on your computer and keep yourself from evil. Make a covenant with your eyes. If you need to put it on your computer, put it on your computer. If you don't have any accountability, there it is for you. You have to, if you need access to, you can't get into certain websites and it's restrict, it, it restricts you down. I'm more concerned with the internet filter, the, the filter on your heart though. But you need to make good steps. You need to take good steps. And if you're alone by yourself, especially those that are listening to this sermon out there, if you're alone by yourself and have no accountability, you have no reason to be on a computer like that. Get off of it. Until you have some accountability. Step number five, I guess, would be live by this principle. Avoid all appearance of evil. Don't go to websites where you know you, may, you, you have a good chance of being defiled. Purposely without any care. I try to, one, one thing I try to do is, is like on some of these news sites. Now, I, I'm more sensitive than I used to be about this because God has made me more sensitive over the years to it. Because, I mean, I know what out now pornography and nudity, what the world considers nudity and everything else is. I understand what the Bible says nudity is, okay? And most people in America run around naked. So you see that in the store, what you see on Fox News. You see that in the store, walking down the road, talking to the cashier, looking next door, walking down the sidewalk. That's what you see all the time now, okay? That's just normal. I'm not, you know, with cleavage showing and everything else, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. They show these pictures and they have cleavage showing and everything else. To me, that's, I don't want to see that. And... You know, I, I remember looking at Fox News and looking at, because all this election stuff and just keeping track of everything and all that kind of stuff that was going on to keep updated with a lot of things. And just, I, I didn't go to Fox News for a long time because of that. And then I remember just go one day, just, you know, a couple days looking at that, and then boom, they have, and I didn't even really fix my eyes too strongly on it. But it was enough to see some image of some woman there that's not dressed properly. They've got to show cleavage, they've got to, that's just all they do. And to most people, that's not a big deal. But to God it is, and it could lead, it'll lead to sin, worse sin. So I was like, Lord, forgive me for even seeing it. I'm not gonna, I, I didn't know what I was seeing at first because it was so early in the morning when I was looking at this, but I was like, okay, I'm moving on. I don't even want to see that. So, you know, and I'm very careful and cautious, and I try to use that. There's a feature on Firefox or one of those that just takes all the pictures out. So there's no pictures, and it's text only. Okay, and that's a good, good thing to do, you know, for especially certain sites that do that. But those are some things. But you know what? I need to stay away from things that, that, are, that, are, that could lead into that. Okay? I need to be careful about that. I need to avoid all appearance of evil. That's the principle I need to live my life by. Avoid all appearance of evil. Okay? Well, there's appearance of evil there. I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to stay away from it. I'm going to be very careful. Be careful while I'm studying. Be careful while I'm doing things like that because I don't want to be defiled. Stay away from Google images and things like that. You have to be very careful with those things because they are very defiling. I remember trying to study a few things for Sound of the Battle Cry and do a few things with that just to get images of different things that I was, and it was just like, I had to like, okay, this is, you can't even do it. Yeah, it'll pull up something dirty. Or if you're trying to find something that just has a picture of something that's not that, they don't care, they want to show you that. Even if you have a filter on it. So, anyway. Um, somebody needs to develop a website of images like that. Where you could use it? Or is there, is there a website like that maybe? Yeah. Well, they put my name on too. If you search my name on YouTube, you, you, th there's a guy that, yeah, they intentionally attach my name to something dirty. So people that go listen to my sermons, they see something dirty. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, they hate me. They hate the Lord. They hate the work of God. They hate Jesus Christ. So they want to do that. Yeah, so they put my name in it. So people are like, oh, it's Pastor Cooley. No, that's not. Yeah. That's how wicked people are. Because sometimes I do a word search on YouTube of my name to just see what people are using my stuff for. Because I have all kinds of people that use our stuff, and I try to track that, what they're doing with it, so I know. But... We need to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. That means we are wise. We're very cunning when we deal with those things. We're very crafty in our dealing with those things in the sense, in the, in the sense of not hiding something, but in the sense of being aware. 
being aware of my surroundings, being aware of what I'm at, where I'm at, what I'm looking at, and what I have access to. Okay? Don't allow yourself to get trapped or sucked in or seduced by evil. And I guess that that's just simple. The next one, I think it's number six maybe. Hate it. If you don't, you won't fight it. You gotta hate it. You gotta hate pornography. You gotta hate it with a passion. You need to hate the sin of pornography. You need to hate it so bad that you have a revenge against it and you want to destroy it. You gotta hate it. Second Corinthians ten six and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. It's a revenge against sin. Hate it with everything in you. You war against it knowing that the devil is behind it and that he's using pornography to destroy children's lives and consuming generations and filling them with unnatural affection. It is destroying marriages. Destroying marriages, destroying lives. Those people that are on that screen, sometimes they, well, they, they want to do what they're doing. Well, you don't know that for sure. Some of these girls are sold into trafficking. These girls are abused girls, and, you, and, 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 and some perverts are, 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 um, are looking and viewing those things. And those poor girls out there are being prostituted. They're being stolen. They're being kidnapped. They're being taken like that. Oh, they want to do all... No, how do you know they do? That's somebody's daughter out there, you pervert. Some people get upset when I say things like that, so I usually try to say it twice. So that can really sink in. That's somebody's daughter, you pervert. That's somebody's girl. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 7, 26. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. You have to hate it. To see how perverted it is, and how wicked it is, and how disgusting it is, and you have to war against it. You have to see the devil's hoof prints all over it, or you won't fight it. If you don't hate it, you won't fight it. You gotta hate it. You gotta hate it. You gotta war against it, absolutely, and have a revenge against it. When you've repented of it, the completeness of your repentance is to revenge and to war against it. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. It is warring against them. And what to do? You know, the last thing I guess I want to say to you, this is, this is, we're about done here, but the last thing I want to say to you is this when it comes to this situation, this subject, is when you see an image that you shouldn't, the first thing you need to do is shut that computer off and pray and ask God to wipe that away from your mind. Even though it wasn't on purpose, ask him to wipe it away from your mind, ask him to forgive, meditate on God's word, listen to some hymns, pray and get away from it. Just shut it and get away from it. Just be done. That's right, overcome evil with good, that's right. And then you go to the scriptures, think on these things, what sort of things are good, what sort of things are honest, what sort of things are just. If there be any virtue... If there be any praise, think on these things. Because that, th those images try to rewire your brain to accept that into your life as normal. And you've got to fight that with the power of the Holy Spirit and cleanse it by the washing of water with the Word. You've got to clean your mind with the Word of God. That's what you have to do. That's right, wash it. Yeah, that's right, the water of the word. That's right, you've got, you've got to cl cleanse your mind with that. You've got to fill your heart with good things. You've got to repent of that, reject it, pray about it, and then put it behind you. Don't dwell on it. Don't get depressed and discouraged by it and then hold your head and think because you'll be thinking about it too much. You've got to put it behind you and keep moving. There are just some practical steps. I know it's something too deep. But I pray there'll be something, it's, it's just a way to prepare before you go online, prepare before you go on there to just prepare your mind to think about some things. You know, you don't aimlessly, well maybe you do and you shouldn't, aimlessly walk around outside the sidewalk not being aware of your surroundings and everything else and not knowing what you're doing or where you're at, then you end up walking off a cliff somewhere, right? 
If you did that, what some people do online and don't mentally prepare for things and spiritually prepare for things, they have their heart right, then guess what they do? You'll walk right off a cliff, and that's what they do online. They walk right into the devil's trap because they are not preparing mentally, physically, spiritually. They're not prepared for that battle. They're not saying, this is what I do online. This is the purpose. I don't live online. I live, in this, I live out here. I live in this world. I don't live in a virtual world. So many people have their lives in a virtual world that they are totally uh, out of reality, out of touch with reality. They don't know how to deal with people. They don't know how to communicate with people. And get around people. Quit, quit hiding out in your room somewhere by yourself. Get out. And go talk to people. And go spend time with others. And go med and meditate on God's word. And get in the light. And stop sitting in darkness. That's when the devil comes for you. I don't know. Just some practical things. I pray they'd be a blessing to you. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I just pray you'd help these things to sink into our hearts. And Lord, may they be a battle plan. You said with good advice, make war. Lord, I believe we've consulted your word for the principles that we need to have victory. Lord, help us to have that victory always. Help us to keep our hearts pure and cleansed by the word of God. Help us to have repentance. And help us to walk the narrow way, keeping our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make a covenant with our eyes. that We won't defile ourselves at all, Lord, like Daniel did. He purposed in his heart. Help us to do those things, Lord, and have the victory that we'd be vessels of honor for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.